Hi, welcome to this professional development session on using PBS Learning Media with Google Classroom. I am Sarah Ackerman. I'm an instructional coach here in Shawnee Mission, and I am excited to take you on this journey through this amazing resource. So what are our goals for today? Well, my hope is that today you will be able to set up your own PBS Learning Media account. I'll take you on a little tour through PBS Learning and all the different ways you can search for things. We are going to learn how to link PBS Learning Media website with Google Classroom. And we're going to be um, making a PBS Learning Media class also, which is a different way to assign content. And then I'm going to show you how to assign content. And Today, Baby Yoda will be our guest because Baby Yoda is my cursor and Baby Yoda will be appearing everywhere today. So what is PBS Learning Media? Well, uh, it's a really, really cool website where tons of resources have been curated by um, the folks at PBS and KCPT into one source that allows you to assign these videos to students to watch, to interact with. There's interactive lessons, supplemental materials, and it's all free. It's an incredible resource. So let's get started working our way through this content. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you go to the pbslearningmedia.org website is you're going to want to sign up for an account. So click on the button up here in the top right hand corner, sign up. And for Shawnee Mission teachers, you're going to want to use the uh, teacher tab here. Make sure you click teacher. And then you're going to want to click on the Google icon here. We're going to um, create our account with our Google credentials. Now, I already have an account, so I'm actually going to use another one of my Google accounts uh, just to show you. But normally, you'd want to use your SMSC um, Google account to sign up. So I go ahead and I click my Google account, and it's that easy. And now I'm all signed up. And um, I can go ahead and put some more information in, give them a little bit more info about me. So I'm going to go ahead and say where my school is. And I'm going to talk about what grades I teach since I'm a coach, I an elementary coach. I'm actually, oh, I'm not eighth grade. And there we go, I'm multiple grades. And so then I mostly deal with science, social studies, math, and English language arts. So those are the ones I'm gonna click, but I'm also gonna choose professional development. You can select everything if you want. Um, yeah, all of this sounds good to me. <laughs> I want all of it, <laughs> even health, yes. Okay, then you're gonna put in your information about your, uh, your name, first and last name, your email, and then you're gonna go ahead and use whatever email it is that you already use for Google. So you can just leave that the same. Um, then it's gonna ask for your pro uh, professional information and it will actually ask you, oh, I put my home to zip code. It will have your school uh, pop up here under school. I'll go ahead and pick my school and you choose what your role is. So I'm gonna say other um, and click save changes. Okay, now I have my profile. So that's it. So I have my account set up. Now, anytime I go back to sign in, I'm just gonna use uh, Google to sign in. So what I'd like everybody to do right now is pause your video and go sign up for an account at PBS Learning Media. And then when you're ready to go on, click play again. Okay, so once you have your account set up, you're gonna go back to the home page. You can always get back to the home page of PBS Learning Media by just clicking the logo up in the top left-hand corner of the screen. That'll take you back to the home page. 
Um, as you kind of take a look around at the home page for the first time, I just want to bring your eye to a few places that you can look for information. We've got different subject areas here um, that are just, those are quick links to different areas that have just thousands and thousands of multimedia items of content. If you keep scrolling down, you can just click on the different subjects that you're looking for. You can also search by grade for content. Um, they're going to note notify you of some updates. There's various blogs that different um, educators post to. Plus, they also have um, free professional development that's offered. Um, this is a self-paced class that's coming up. So always interesting to see what it is that they're offering there. They um, have collections where they've curated um, different things. This series here is actually a series that um, math teachers from Missouri uh, putting together like ideas around best practices. So there's stuff for your students, but there's also stuff for you as teachers as well. And then if you keep um, scrolling down, they've got their upcoming events. And you can see that all of this information is linked to KCBT, our local um, PBS affiliate. So there's also Spanish language content. I wanted to bring us back to the top of the page though, because I wanna show you um, how, when you do choose content that you wanna push out to your students, where you go to the first thing you need to do for that, okay? So come up here to the uh, top right hand corner and underneath your name, you're gonna click here and you've got several things. You've got your dashboard, your favorites, your folders, assignments, classes, tools, profile, and logout. We're gonna go ahead and click on classes because what we wanna do is we wanna link our Google Classroom to our PBS Learning Media page. That way the two applications can kind of talk to each other and we can um, actually add content from PBS Learning Media to our Google Classroom. So we're gonna click import a class from Google Classroom. And the first time you do it, it's gonna ask you to choose your account. Now again, you're gonna be using your SMSC account. Since I've already done this with my SMSC account, I'm gonna pick my Fort Hayes account. So it's going to ask you if it if you will allow it to the website to allow your information in classroom and you're going to say allow. And then it's going to ask you which classes you want to import. So I'm going to I have one class in my Google Classroom here. It's called my Google Training Classroom. So I'm going to click that and click import. And so it says your Google Classroom has been successfully imported. Students must log into PBS Learning Media using their Google accounts. This class will automatically appear in their dash dashboard. So if you want to announce that they that they have this class um, or that they have this resource, you can say announce this in Google Classroom. Let's go ahead and do that. And now over here in our Google Classroom. I refresh my page, you will see that now I've automatically got this PBS Learning link here for my students and I can tell them to log in. And when students log in, they just need to use their Google account. Um, so that would be their SMSC number at smsc.org and make sure they sign in with Google and then they'll be, um, and then whatever password you're using at your building for Google. So that's how we get them in there. Isn't that so cool? So PBS Learning has two different looks. It's got the look for teachers which is this appearance here. And when you assign a student a video, they're gonna come right to that video in PBS Learning. But students, when they just log into PBS Learning with their student account, they're gonna see something that looks like this, okay? And 
they actually have the opportunity to have assignments and projects and be in a class right within the PBS Learning site. So you can have your Google Classroom and have like students put, you can push out links to students through the Google Classroom login, or you can also set up a class that ties directly into the student portal for PBS Learning Media. And so to do that, what you do is come over here to the, this is the teacher site, and you click on your name and you go to classes. And then you, before we had done import a class from Google Classroom, but in this case, you would click create a class. And so you might, um, I'm just gonna say Mrs. A's fifth grade, because I always taught fifth grade. I'm gonna change my name to Mrs. Ackerman. And so now when I click get invitation code, it's going to give me an invitation code here that I can give my students and then they, my students would use this class invitation code when they come to the website to join our class. And so once they're there, any assignments that I make for them in PBS Learning Media would show up here. So those are two ways that you can get kids access to content in PBS Learning Media. You can also just copy this full link and have students just click on that class code. Remember to also have them use their Google class or their Google uh, credentials to log in also. Um, okay, few words about the kids site. So the kids site, it at first glance, it looks pretty kid friendly and it kind of is, but then it, it also kind of isn't, especially if the kids are young. So, but I want to show you some of the neat materials that are here in the kids area. So if a student goes to the site and like, let's just say they want to look up resources for language arts. it's gonna give them all of this information. This is a lot, okay? And if I'm thinking about little ones, they're gonna need some help navigating this. So I would really encourage you to pick out the resources and push those out to your students. But there's great stuff here. If they have a parent who is willing to help them, I mean, they can be navigated towards Martha videos, Clifford videos, between the Lions videos, if I pick all reading foundational skills and I just want to do phonological awareness, I get tons of resources here of things that I can use. So if you are teaching remotely, you don't have to recreate all of these videos. There's so much here that you can use and push out to your students. Okay, so we're back here at the home screen, and now what I want us to do is I want us to look at how we can search for content and then how you can assign some content from PBS Learning Media to your students through Google Classroom. So um, for starters, I'm just going to go ahead and take the approach of looking at browsing by subject. I'm going to look at science resources. And so once I click on science, it brings me to a page that gives me different areas of science that I can explore more resource resources. Or I can also filter by grade, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to filter by fifth grade. And then I can also choose what type of resource am I looking for? We have videos, we have interactive lessons, um, we have lesson plans, there's a media gallery with photos, there's audio files like podcasts and things like that, images, um, and then articles. So I'm, but I'm going to look for a video. So I want a video to pique my students' interest and build some background knowledge about water. Water is one of the fourth quarter uh, units like the world's water, um, the students are asked to graph uh, the different 
sources of water throughout the world. So we're, we're going to build some background knowledge about water. So I'm going to choose video here, and then it gives me a lot of videos here, as you can see, tons of videos. I can just keep going, click see more videos, and there's just so many more. But I see this video here called Precipitation on Earth, and I can actually hit the little play button, and it'll pull it up for me. And you're going to want to watch the videos and see if they're going to suit your needs or not. But um, so it's so great. And look, also with this video, there's support materials. There's a link here that says support materials that I can see. It comes with background reading for the teacher, some teaching tips about teaching with this video, things you can do with it. it gives you some discussion questions that you could use. Um, it gives you some tips for diverse learners. It gives you a, a translation for Spanish. Um, there's an activity tied to the, this video. So look at all these re wonderful resources that are tied to just this quick three minute video here. Um, it also tells me what standards I can see that we're tying into here, the fifth grade standards. Um, so, and but you can also see it can be used for other grades too. So that's really fantastic. I mean, just a very robust resource with lots of uses. Now, if you're not ready to um, assign something right now, you can always just click favorite and you and then that you've added that to your favorites. And later on, you can come back to it. But if you are ready to assign this resource to your students and you have a, a plan for how you're going to use it, you can go ahead and click share to Google Classroom and you'll pull up that link. It's going to ask you which class you want to assign that to. I'm going to assign it to my Google training class. Then you can choose an action. You can either create an assignment, ask a question, make an announcement, or create material. So for this, I'm just going to um, tell the students to, I think I'm just going to create material. So then they just have this video as a resource. Um, and later on, I might go back and make it into an uh, assignment, but I'm going to create material, click go. You can rename it. You can give it a description and tell the students what you want to do, what you want them to do with that video. So I might say, watch this video on Earth's precipitation and then make a comic book page about the most interesting facts you discovered while watching the video. Making a comic book page is always a great way to have kids show their show their learning and um, it for the kids who struggle with like writing out paragraphs and things it's a it's a nice um, scaffolding tool to use especially early on to just make a comic book page um, so and then they're going to get this assignment and well it's not really an assignment it's like a suggest suggested activity and I just click post here and then it goes right into my Google Classroom. I click view and now I can see this new material. And when the students open it up, they'll have the link to the video and it's got my description that I put in there for it. And students can write comments about what they did, um, that kind of thing. If I made this in a, as an assignment, it'd have an inbox where they could turn in their work. but. Um, I didn't do that for this one. You don't always have to do that. You can just sometimes just post videos and things like that for your students to see and look at. So look, there are so many resources in here. You've got to just kind of explore. Okay. So some of the things that PBS is best known for are just the wonderful children's television shows. The children's television workshop that began in, I believe, the late 60s, 
started with um, shows like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and um, Sesame Street. And those terrific, wonderful, beautiful shows are here in the PBS Learning Media Library. So if there's a show, a classic show that you want to find maybe clips from or um, find curated collections of resources relating to those classic PBS shows, you can just do a search. So if you search for, for example, Sesame Street, and so this would obviously be for younger teachers, there are 948 search results related to Sesame Street. So I was just doing some just meandering around and I found this curated collection um, of related to Sesame Street. And it's kind of interesting how they have broken up the different areas of content. Um, one of the things that Sesame Street has always done a really great job is teaching children how to manage their emotions. So they curated um, an area of resources here under emotional development. And so I can see that there's an interactive activity here, the Sesame Street Storybook Builder, um, where students can build their own storybook using various characters. There's some videos here, um, just short clips from the show. Here's a thing about learning how to wait your turn. Here's a thing about um, loving your hair. Um, so just, you know, these beautiful emotional learning resources that you could add to your lessons about emotional learning. There's, um, there's games, there's things related to literacy. So if you've got specific skills that you're wanting to teach, like you wanna do some phonemic awareness, here's rhyme time. Um, and so just, you know, I really encourage you to take the time to look through these resources because they're quality resources. Um, they're very engaging. It's fun to see the celebrities that, that always, came on to Sesame Street and the different things that they're doing. So look for content there. If you want to um, look for things that maybe are for like a little bit older kids, you just can sort for resources by sort of areas of school. So you can click upper elementary and you're going to get more things that are from, you know, resources like NASA and different um, like Ken Burns documentaries and just all of those wonderful PBS resources. Um, you, I can't show you everything that's on here because there's literally tens of thousands of resources. But what I would encourage you to do now that I've taken you through a quick drive through of PBS Learning Media is I would encourage you to take the time to look at some content that you have coming up that, or some standards you have coming up that you want to work with your students on. So um, if you're teaching, let's see, uh, we'll go with the next generation science standards, you can click standards and you can search for standards areas based on your grade and then come up with resources for those standards, okay? So here, if I was gonna be using the standard that is, I think that's Earth, Earth Standards right here, I can click that and then it's gonna immediately take me to all of these resources that help us teach that standard. So you would click something that you think is gonna work for you here would be a good one why should we collect protect freshwater mussels i don't know why should we collect why should we protect them and you just would go ahead and look through the the support materials that they offer for that activity and if you want to use it you can share it out to your google classroom okay please reach out to me if you've got any questions on how to use this content at PBS Learning Media. 
So thanks so much for joining me today for this PBS Learning Media overview. I want to leave you with this. Um, from here, it would be great if you just immediately tried out this resource while it's fresh in your mind. Get your account made. Uh, go ahead and link PBS Learning Media to your Google Classroom or set up, set up a class and push it out to your students via Seesaw with the class link, however you want to do that. Then try creating an assignment using a PBS Learning Media resource and reflect on how you could use PBS Learning Media with your students. Maybe talk to your grade level team and think about different ways that you could just immediately get in there and dig in with this resource. Again, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, Baby Yoda says he enjoyed being with you today too. So take care. Bye-bye.